in your data. So that would be the lowercase n a lot of times. So if we look at, let's look at an example here. So I pulled this off my website. This is COC stat students in the fall 2015 semester. And we asked them, how do they get to school? What type of transportation do they take to get to school? There was a total of 332 stat students. And 267 of them uh, drive alone. 18 of them were dropped off. 30 of them carpooled one bicycle. Uh, six used public transportation. And 10 walked. Okay? Not surprising, California. In California, especially in Los Angeles, we tend to drive a lot. Everything's very spaced out, so everybody drives. Um, but, the, uh, so these would be the counts, the, um, or the amounts, or frequency. Okay, the, um, these numbers here. But what would be the percentages, or the proportions, for each of these, cat, each of these variables? So what proportion of the students drive alone? So for that, I'm going to use a formula. Proportion is usually denoted by a P hat. They take a P and they put this little hat on top of it. That's a common letter in stats for a, a decimal proportion from categorical data. So proportion is equal to the amount divided by the total. Or sometimes you'll see this formula, X over N. So the amount divided by the total. So if I'm trying to figure out the proportion that drive alone, um, I'm going to do 267 divided by the total, 332. Now, when I do that, I get, I divide these two numbers, I get this decimal, right? 0.8042168 keeps going, right? Which brings us to sort of rounding rules. Um, and different teachers may have different rounding rules. Um, a common rounding rule I tend to use for categorical data is uh, I round my proportions to three significant figures, which is uh, the thousands place or the third number to the right of the decimal. So usually I write round proportions to the third number to the right of the decimal. And then if you convert that back into a percentage, the percentage will actually be at the tenths place, which is one number to the right of the decimal. So kind of think of it, an easy way to think of it is that the proportions usually will have three numbers to the right of the decimal and percentages will have one number to the right of the decimal. So in this problem, the three numbers to the right of the decimal would be the four, eight, zero, four. Now we get into sort of rounding. So hopefully you've seen rounding before. This, this uh, video is not really explaining roundings per se. But usually what you do is you look to the number to the right of the place value you're trying to measure. So if I look to the number, I'm rounding the four, so I look to the number to the right of it. If that number is five through nine, I round up. That means I'm going to uh, add one to the place value, add one to the four and make it 0 .805. If this number is zero through four, the number to the right, then I'm going to leave this place value alone and, uh, and that would be called rounding down. In general, by the way, this number, 0 0.8042168, is, is between 0 0.804 and 805. And all you're trying to do is figure out which one is it closer to. Because this number, the number next to a the 4 is a 2, that means this is closer to 8.804. I should round down. So I'm going to round that to 0 0.804. Now again, if I multiply that by 100 on my calculator or move it to the decimal two places to the right, that would give me 80.4%. If you notice, the percentage is rounded to the tenths place, one number to the right of the decimal. Sometimes you'll hear that in stat books. They'll say round the percentage, uh, round to a tenth of a percent. That's a very common rounding rule for percentages. And I did the same thing for all the others. So 18 divided by 332, and I rounded, I got about point. 054 for dropped off, which was about 5.4 percent of the stat students were dropped off. Um, 30, car, 30 divided by 332 is uh, 0.090. So I know what you're thinking. Yes, uh, well, isn't that the same as 0 0.09? Yes, but actually the zero is is good to write because that tells you tells us that you rounded to the thousands place and it just happened to round to zero there, but um, you, count, you, you did round to the thousands place. You didn't round it to the hundredths place. 
So 0 0.090, and again, that would be 9% or 9.0%. Again, notice I put the 0, 0.0 there just to tell people that I rounded it to that accuracy. And if you wrote that at 9%, a lot of times people think you rounded to the, to the ones place there on the percentage. Uh, 1 divided by 332, if I uh, round that, that's 0 0.003 or 0.3%. Now be careful, 0.3% is not 3%, right? That's, this is less than 1%, it's 3 tenths of a percent. 6 divided by 332 gives me 0 0.018 or 1.8%. 10 divided by 332 is 0 0.030 or 3.0%. So here's my percentages and these are my proportions. So if you want these, this might, this is your this is your, um, these counts here are your X, uh, and these proportions here are sometimes denoted as a P hat. You take a P and you put a little hat on it. Okay? And then these, of course, are the percentages at the end. So a lot of times when you get categorical data, one of the first thing you do is usually put the data into a computer program and then have the computer go ahead count and calculate all of this for you. Uh, really, you don't want to count these yourselves unless somebody's already counted it for you. All right, now there's a, a few different famous uh, graphs that are used in categorical data. Um, one of them, a couple here, so they, I put them over here. Uh, one of them is called the frequency bar chart. So the frequency bar chart. So a frequency bar chart is just a count, uh, basically shows you the frequency. Remember the X is the, or the amount is the frequency? That are these numbers, 267, these are frequencies, 18, 30, 1. Just counts how many people or objects in the, in the data have that characteristic. So if you notice, the bar goes up to 267 there, because there was a 267 was my frequency. And then this bar, the dropped off bar goes up to 18 because there's 18 people that were dropped off and the carpool one goes up to 30 and because uh, that uh, again there was 30 people that were dropped off and so on. The biking uh, is barely off, it's only one. Uh, public transportation was only six and walking was only 10 so those are really really small. Now you can also see uh, something called a relative frequency bar chart. A relative frequency bar chart, what that means is they convert everything to proportion. So think of a relative frequency bar chart as, as they're, they're, really, they're really converting to proportion. So they're using the p-hats. So the p-hats that we calculated here, the bars are going to go up to that proportion. So if you notice the proportion for drive alone was 0.804 and you'll see this bar goes up to 0 0.804. And then for dropped off, the, bar, the proportion was 0 0.054, so you can see this bar goes up to 0 0.054. And carpooling was 0 0.090, so this bar goes up to 0 0.090. This is called a relative frequency bar chart. A relative frequency means you're, all, of the, all of these have um, been converted to proportions. By the way, you also sometimes see a percentage uh, relative frequency bar chart where these would be percentages converted back to percentage, but most of the time it's left as a proportion. A third kind of graph that you sometimes see is the pie chart, which is very famous. It kind of looks like a piece of a pie, and uh, basically it calculates the usually the percentages. It's usually a percentage for each of your categorical variables. So 80% of the pie, which is most of the pie here, was drive alone. So you'll see it says drive alone and 80.4%. And then you, these little ones, they kind of broke up into pieces. So the, the biking was 0.3%. So that's this little green sliver right here. Uh, public transportation was 1.8%, this little um, dark black sliver right here. Uh, walking was this orange little piece, so that was 3%, dropped off was 5.4%, that's this blue one right here, carpooling was 9%, that's this red, uh, red piece of the pie right here. Um, and this is sort of tends to look what pie charts look like. Again, these are things that we really don't create ourselves. Usually a computer program gives us these graphs. But it's good to kind of have an idea of what these graphs tell us. Again, it's really easy. One of the things uh, 
it's really easy to see in a frequency bar chart, for example, is which group was the highest, right? Well, which group had the tallest bar? I can see that the most, most uh, was drive alone. Okay, so it's very useful for these kind of comparisons. All right? So this was categorical data analysis part one. We'll actually uh, look at part two um, and uh, give you a few more um, techniques that sometimes we like to look at uh, with categorical data analysis. So I'll see you on the next video.